With today being Major League Baseball's trade deadline, which uh, stops at 4 p.m. Eastern time, I wanted to look at the trades that have happened the previous couple days that might impact some teams. One team specifically uh, might make a big uh, might make a big trade later today, considering of all the people they have gathered up. But the first trade that was maybe a big trade you could say was um, Tommy Listella going to the Oakland Athletics and Franklin Barreto going to the Los Angeles Angels. To me, I think this is a good trade for both teams. For the A's, they get a decent second baseman that has decent fielding and has really good, as good, he's good offensively. For the Angels, I believe they get younger with Barreto. Barreto has, uh, really, really hasn't played. Um, hasn't really, maybe you could say he didn't get a fair shot in Oakland. Uh, they've had Jerks and Profar in there. Uh, at second, they went out and free agency got him over starting Barreto. Uh, you've had utility options like Pinder maybe play second. You've had utility guys come in and play. So maybe Barreto didn't get a good shot. I mean, he's not old. He's 27, I think. I think Barreto's around that age. And maybe with a change of scenery, Barreto can held that starting job. Uh, with Barreto being a or a shortstop, my bad. Barreto's a shortstop, or at least that's what he's listed as. Uh, I still think Barreto. I don't think he's going to start over Simmons. He's going to be more of a depth guy. If Simmons needs a rest, or maybe go play second if Fletcher needs a rest. Um, so I think, I mean, the better team, the team that wins a trade is the team that got the better player. I, as of right now. Days won it. Now, in a decade or later, we could figure out who did, but as of right now, the A's are going for trying to lock down that division, and second base was really the only maybe offensive hole they had. So getting Listella is not a bad deal. That's something that they needed, so they went out and got it, and they gave up very little for it. Bredo could be a really good player. He just wasn't in Oakland. Uh, and then you have... Padres who went to Costco and bought everything in bulk. Uh, they've made four trades in the past couple days, past two days maybe. First one, which they absolutely needed, was Trevor. They they acquired Trevor Rosenthal from the Royals for center fielder Edward Olivares and a player to be named later. What the theme throughout this these trades that the Padres have made, including especially this one, is. They're willing to give up prospects, low-level prospects, to try to win now. They haven't made the playoffs since 2006. They're desperately trying to get back, and this might be their best chance. I mean, low game schedule. Their offense is on fire. Yeah, I mean, Cronenworth's emerged. Uh, Tatis has managed to stay healthy so far. Machado's looking like uh, what he was with the Orioles. Uh this team's just really good. It's just their bullpen and their starting. Uh, starting pitching is what they need to acquire um, to make that final, to maybe cement their position in the playoffs. Maybe. Um, so, I mean, Rosenthal has looked good this season. I believe last time he was 5-for-5 five five on save opportunities, but he's pitched in 10 games before... Uh, I believe four or five days ago when they the Royals played the Cardinals uh, when he was pulled out because um, uh, Matheny took him out. So Rosenthal was a key, was a, a big trade target for people, for teams that needed a bullpen like San Diego. I'm just worried that maybe with the change of scenery with going to San Diego, I don't know if it's going to help him. Uh, help Rosenthal because he had his old manager in Kansas City, he had Matheny. He had someone that he knew very well. And he, when Rosenthal and Matheny were together, Rosenthal, you could argue, was the best closer uh, during three years, 14, 15, 16. He had the most saves during that stretch of time. Um, second trade that the Padres made was for Mitch Moreland. They gave up or let me start at the beginning here. 
The Red Sox traded away Mitch Moreland to the Padres for third baseman Hudson Potts and center fielder Jason Rosario. I think that's how you say his first name. Uh, again, low-level prospects at positions that they have depth at, that they are willing to give up to get a guy in Mitch Moreland who has had a hell of a year through 67 at-bats. Low sample size a little bit, but... In 67 at-bats, he has 22 hits, 8 homers, 21 RBIs. So he has as many RBIs as he does hits. Batting 328 with a 430 on base and a 1.177 OPS. This season has gone really well for Mitch Moreland in a low sample size through most of the season so far. Because he's usually the first baseman, if not the D. Uh, no, he's usually the first baseman, if not a platoon player uh, to sub out for uh, either start at first or beat DH when JD plays the field, which I don't think ever happens. Um, but no, this helps the Padres. I think they won this deal considering the past five games in their lineup. They've either had Ty France, who we will get to later, and Greg Garcia be their DH. Getting Mitch Moreland as a solidified power bat, a guy that can score in runs, be a big run scorer, which this team already is right now, uh, helps out immensely. Especially with him being a lefty, it helps diversify that lineup. Uh, with Profar being a switch hitter and Hosmer being a lefty, it gives that lineup a little bit more uh, uh, rugged feeling. Have more guys uh, have different handedness so it can struggle pitchers as well. Uh, but no, I mean... The Red Sox weren't kidding when they were saying they were going to that everybody was, um, everybody was on the block, other than maybe two people. But even then, you could still make a case that they're up on the block. Uh, Padres still aren't done for the third trade in the past two days. They traded pitcher Gerardo Reyes for catcher Jason Castro. Now. I, they won this deal. I mean, most of these trades you can say they won for, except for one, and that's the next one. Um, Jason Kesher is struggling this year, batting below 200 in the games he's played, and he was supposed to be the, I believe, the starter for the Angels. It just hasn't panned out after the after the, he signed in LA. Um, now you look at the trade. And for a guy that's struggling, that's fine to give up a pitcher that has started in uh, 2019, last season. Gerardo Reyes was only 4-0. Well, he was 4-0. But if you look at these games, he, he appeared in 27 games. He started 0, so he was roughly a relief pitcher. Or he was a relief pitcher. He had an ERA of 7-6-2. Allowed 22 earned runs in 27 games. 22 earned runs in 26 innings. Flipping Gerardo Reyes for Castro is, a, to me, a brilliant move from Preller. Because Reyes wasn't going to work out. He hasn't seen the field really this No, he hasn't seen uh, the field this year. So, I mean, getting... Flipping a talent that wasn't working for a talent that's struggling is a good move. Now, getting on to the deal, and I will talk about their catcher situation in this trade because it's a little bit more prominent in this trade. Padres made a seven-player deal with the Mariners. They traded, or the, or the, the Padres received from the Mariners catcher Austin Nola, right-handed pitcher Austin Adams, Right-handed pitcher Dan Altavia, four. Right-handed pitcher Andres Munoz, catcher Luis Torrens, center fielder Taylor Trammell, and third baseman Ty France. To me, I think they overpaid for this deal, considering Austin Ola is having a good year. He's batting above 300. Looks like a key power bat, something that Hedges is not. Hedges is more defensive-oriented. Now you could have Nola come in who's competent defensively and play, or, yeah, have Hedges come, or, yeah, let me get this right. Have Nola come in, play f six innings, 
five innings and then have Hedges come in as a defensive replacement late in the game, especially if the game's close. Um, whether you're winning or losing, have to have a defensive replacement in the later innings is great. And I think that could help. Or, like I mentioned earlier, Austin Nola might be a trade piece to get maybe, if they're trying to, maybe to try and get a landslide. Maybe to try and get a Mike Clevenger. And the reason I'm saying that is, as of right now, Padres have four catchers. They did trade away a minor leaguer catcher in the Mar with the Mariners. Um, they have Austin Hedges, Mejia, Francisco Mejia, who they traded to get a couple of years ago from the Indians, um, who was rated really high um, on uh, MLB Pipeline. He's a high-rated prospect. Um, hope you can't hear that, but I got a plane flying over my head. But um, where was that? Mejia. I would not be surprised if one, if not two, of these catchers get traded. Because if you're looking at this trade, Nola, Adams, Altavia. Nola's good. Adams Adams and Altavia, I assume they're bullpen guys, which would help the Padres. Um, but when you trade away higher rated prospects like an Andres Munoz, like a Taylor Trammell, uh, and you trade away Ty French, who has major league experience as the DH, and a couple games playing third for Machado. It it seems like an overpayment. Especially if they trade away one of those three guys for uh, a bigger uh, bigger starter, maybe a starting pitcher. I mean, something like that. It just this trade, out of all these four trades, this is the one I could say they maybe lost. Cause Especially throwing in Trammell, which is weird, I think. Maybe that's who uh, the Mariners wanted. But even then, Taylor Trammell, and this is what I'm liking about what Preller has done so far. Taylor Trammell was their fifth-rated prospect in the minors. So he's projected to be really well, really good. Good defensively, good with the bat, another power lefty guy. Um... Uh, Preller did not purge his minor league system. Out of all the 15 or top 15 prospects that he traded away, Taylor Trammell was the only one that he traded away, and he was prospect number five in their system, projected as number five. So, I mean, this trade, to me, it doesn't, doesn't make sense considering you have the catcher depth, you have too many catchers. If Adams and Altavia are relief pitchers, that's nice. But are they really going to help your bullpen? And you give up Munoz, which that's that's fine if you didn't throw in Trammell. I think you would have had to throw in Munoz just to get Nola anyway if it was a one-for-one. One. But that's the only trade that's perplexing to me. But I mean, other than that, Preller has done really well in the other throughout the other days. It's just that trade with the Mariners, which sticks out. But I want to end this video on the Chicago Cubs. They made a trade with the Tampa Bay Rays. The Cubs sent the Rays a player to be named later in cash for first baseman this season, an outfielder, Jose Martinez. Now, as a Cards fan, it's going to pain me to watch Jose Martinez in blue and pinstripes. But the Chicago Cubs won this trade. Martinez can slug the ball. He's not good defensively. That's why St. Louis shipped him out to uh, Tampa Bay. Um, Chicago won this trade. Hands down. There's no way you could argue that they didn't. Unless the player to be named later turns out to be Babe Ruth, which they're not. Um... Martinez had a down year this year, which, I mean, the season's real. The season is so wonky. It's hard to take anybody what they're doing this season 
in any modicum of sense as their uh, for um, how do I want to say this? Take this season and look at all their other seasons, and it's just hard to look at it and say, is this the player that you are, or is this how you're playing just under these circumstances? Which I think Jose Martinez falls into that latter category. Martinez is a good batter. He works counts. He swings at good pitches. Doesn't really swing at bad pitches. And he can hit the he can hit the long ball, which is what baseball is today. Usually high slugging percentage, high, uh, usually relatively high batting averages, around 270. About well, that's average though. About 280, 270, 280. He's really good with runners in scoring position, especially, which helps the Cubs out because they're number one in the division. They're trying to push for that maybe another World Series ring with this core because we don't know if they're going to be able to keep it, especially with the way they acted in free agency. Um, but no, Cubs won this trade, hands down. Um, and I'm hoping that the later we get to 4 Eastern time here in the States, um, it's going to get a lot more hectic, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Trade deadline day uh, for baseball is always really fun, whether or not there's trades being made or not. The speculation is always nice to see and nice to hear. Um, but no, that's really the end of the video. Um, if you guys liked it, press the like button, subscribe down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Share this video with all your friends and buddies. And for the deadline today, I might... Uh, I'm going to put it down in the description, but I'm probably going to be streaming on Twitch for probably starting 1 o'clock Eastern time for the deadline so I can um, have my uh, uh, feelings and emotions captured forever at this point, um, and I think it could be really fun. Um, and I'll probably end up streaming until 4 Eastern, and then I will make a recap video for the deadline. What trades happened today and all that jazz. But I'll link to that, I'll link to the Twitch in the description. I'll either stream, I'll stream baseball most likely. I might stream a couple other games because I'm going to be playing for probably three hours. So it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, I hope. Um... But that's really it. That's all I wanted to say. And I will see you guys in the, uh, later on today in the next video.